1977, Soviet engineers celebrated the successful construction of a nuclear power station at the small Ukrainian town of Chernobyl. On the 26th of April 1986, one of the reactors exploded and changed forever the world's view of nuclear power. Chernobyl Unit 4 was completely destroyed. The graphite core caught fire, glowing red hot. For 10 days, the plume of hot gases carried away the radioactive elements. Nine tons of fuel escaped in the fallout cloud. October 1989, and this is the village of Kupachi in the Ukraine. Although it's more than three years since the accident, the consequences of Chernobyl are still being felt today. Even today, entire villages are still being demolished. 135,000 people were evacuated from the zone around Chernobyl. Radiation means their homes are now fit for just one thing. It's a small, sad example of the continuing cost of Chernobyl. When the Soviet army finished, this was all that remained of Kopachi. In this special edition of Tomorrow's World, we've come to the Ukraine to find out for ourselves the consequences of Chernobyl, the world's worst civil nuclear accident. We also have exclusive access to the Soviet maps, which for the first time reveal what they believe to be the true spread of the radiation. This year, a hundred villages are due to be evacuated. We'll be going to Chernobyl itself to find out what went wrong and what they're doing now to make sure it never happens again. Estimates for fatal cancers resulting from the accident have been trebled in the last year. So we'll be looking at the monitoring of the population who live in the affected villages, because Chernobyl will be able to tell us a great deal about the dangers involved in living with radiation. 31 people died in the explosion and from radiation burns received fighting the fire. Once helicopters had smothered the burning reactor, one of the most dangerous demolition jobs in human history began. One tonne of radioactive fuel fell on the site itself. The job of these men was to retrieve intensely radioactive lumps of fuel and react to graphite. Radiation of this strength kills in under an hour. In theory, each man was limited to 60 seconds of this work per year. The danger of such close exposure to the heart of a nuclear reactor will only be revealed by time. Approaching Chernobyl today, you first reach a military checkpoint. This is the 30-kilometer exclusion zone around the power station. Only people working at Chernobyl are legally permitted inside the zone. Everything coming out is checked for contamination. Checking us on this trip is Glasgow University health physicist Dr. Bill East. Instead of forest, the power station is today surrounded by scrub and decontamination sand. A desperate need for electricity was the reason the plant was not abandoned. It took two years to recommission units one, two and three. The first question was how such an accident could ever have happened. This is the control room of Chernobyl Unit 1. On April the 25th, 1986, the reactor operators in Unit 4 began an unusual safety experiment to test the behavior of the turbines under conditions of low reactor power. During the long wait to begin that experiment, nobody noticed that the reactor started to produce excessive amounts of xenon gas. Now, xenon gas has the effect of turning the reactor sluggish. So, in an attempt to produce even a small amount of power, they decided to withdraw an increasingly large number of the control rods.
At the moment, this reactor has 50 control rods inserted. The minimum safe number of control rods for an RBMK reactor was 43. At the height of the experiment, that was reduced to between 8 and 6. Coolant water started to turn to steam. Steam absorbs less neutrons than water, and the power started to rise. That in turn produced even more steam. Still less neutrons absorbed, and the power surged ever higher. Emergency cooling water should automatically have been pumped in well before they reached this stage, but the operators had disabled the safety system. At 012340, the shift manager attempted an emergency shutdown. Three seconds later, the reactor went super prompt critical. It reached a hundred times its safe maximum power output in just four seconds. The first explosion blew the 2,000 ton reactor cover off. The second was probably caused by the ignition of hydrogen. At their trial, six managers were sentenced to prison for criminal disregard of safety. But equally guilty was the RBMK reactor design. Modifications include changes to the fuel enrichment and an increase in the number of control rods. The lesson across the nuclear world is that however well trained, safety cannot depend on operators always obeying the rules. The safety systems are now more automated and faster acting. The single most important modification has been the introduction of a fast response safety system. In an emergency, this button will automatically insert all the control rods into the reactor. Before the accident, this would have taken 18 seconds. Now, here in Unit 1, it would take just two and a half seconds. Today, the remains of Unit 4 lie buried in a steel and concrete sarcophagus. The molten fuel inside is intensely monitored for any signs of a chain reaction that might lead to a meltdown. After the loss of human life, the second casualty of Chernobyl was a Soviet RBMK reactor design. At the time of the accident, there were 15 RBMKs in service in the Soviet Union. Since then, some of them have been closed down, and others under construction have been halted. Understandably, the design has lost all credibility, and no new RBMKs will ever be built. Still paying the cost of the discredited design are those people who fought the fire at Chernobyl. Every six months, they come for prolonged checkups to the clinic at Kiev. Nikolai Nechiporienko and Andrei Melnikov both received such massive amounts of radiation they almost died from acute radiation syndrome. Recovery has been slow and there's the continuing threat of cancer. Three years later, how are you feeling now? In principle, symptoms of всех, наверное, ну я бы не сказал, что у всех одинаковые, но в принципе есть, значит такое определенное сходство. Значит, сходство, что у всех, значит, головные боли, такое недомогание. Вот, у меня, значит, головокружение. Вот. Общая слабость в организме. Да, к вечеру сильная усталость. Вот. Ну и, значит, внутренние органы, там, печень, желудок тоже, в общем-то, у многих, ну, не у многих, наверное, у всех болит и печень. Определенное лечение есть, хотя мы значит, выходим отсюда, ну, нельзя сказать, что здоровыми людьми, но какую-то поддержку получаем. What have they told you here about your futures? Ну что они говорят? Обнадеживают нас, чтобы мы не расстраивались, будет все нормально. Ну и мы надеемся. After the accident, everyone was evacuated for 30 kilometers around Chernobyl. The nearest town was Pripyat. Today, Pripyat is still abandoned, except for a factory used by research scientists. 60,000 people once lived here. Too dangerous to live in, it's too expensive to demolish. Inexplicably, the tannoy was still working.
What the woman was doing there, we never knew. But if people are returning to their homes, just five kilometers from Chernobyl, then even today, it's very unwise. Yeah. One can see, you know, if you check them coming down here like this. Um, okay. Alarm's on, straight away. The alarm's on, that's right. What's it meandering between? This is oh, about 800 or something like that, at the moment, in this, just in this bit here. But in other parts, I've seen it up to nearly 2,000, actually, in what we've been testing while we're here. Right. I mean, I think that uh, in terms of the work here, that we wouldn't want to hang around too long. An hour, an hour and a half, a couple of hours, something like that, to get the filming done that we want to do. I think that's the sort of time. Okay. The children who once slept in this nursery spent 36 hours under the fallout cloud before they were evacuated. I think of all the sad, deserted scenes that we've seen here in Pripyat today, perhaps the saddest has to be here in a kindergarten and this mutated tree. And there is April 1986. The growth before it, and there's the mutation to a different variety. And it really is a grim reminder of just how much damage the radiation could do. Before evacuation, the average dose received in Pripyat in just one day was 50 times the British limit for an entire year. The latest Soviet predictions for the 135,000 evacuees from the zone are an extra 700 fatal cancers. Only time will tell if the prediction is too high or too low. But Chernobyl is set to redefine our knowledge about the harm that can be caused by radiation. We discovered the final use for Pripyat in an abandoned greenhouse. The earth here was also strongly radioactive. Surprisingly, agricultural chemists were using it to experiment with varieties of crop that will absorb minimum amounts of radioactivity from the soil. Resistant seeds are selling well throughout the Ukraine and Belarusia. It's a bitter example of the lengths the Soviets are being forced to go to as they learn to live with radiation. Six kilometers from Chernobyl is the Forest of Miracles, infamous for reports of bizarre mutations. Of all the places we visited, this had the highest levels of radiation. How much higher is the radiation here than we were getting at uh, outside the sarcophagus? It's up to, uh, well, five times. Five times as yeah, much? Yeah, it's five times. Professor Grudzinski, a radiation botanist, is alarmed by the mutations he's found. Here you are, a very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, what's happening there? Um, I, I think that uh, it is, uh, the reason for this uh, yeah. radiation inhibit, inhibits the growth of the main shoot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then another shoot are growing. Will this tree grow back normally after a while? Uh, this tree? Mm -hmm. no. 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 The levels of radiation just after the accident that produced these effects would have killed an adult in under an hour. These are interesting. Here you are very interesting for uh, high radiation the mouth. All is dead, but here. Mm. For yeah. And abnormal yeah. needles here yes. you are. Yes. yes. And the shaping too. Yes. That's right. Very Quite abnormal odd. Odd. and yes, this abnormal right. and is dead or what? Right. Hey, Professor, are there any oak trees near here that we could perhaps oak look at? Oak trees, yes. <clears throat> we can see uh, oak trees there. Okay. If we very quickly go and have a... Yes, but... Yeah. Have a wander. Make it quick, though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> ah, yes, here's an oak tree. Yeah. You are, but two years ago, all leaves were large. Right. And now, normal, I suppose. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe some... Louder than normal. That's typical of the kind of thing, is it? That, um... so some longer. Now this is abnormal, is it, in, the, in its in its size? Some uh, some longer than normal. Right. Now because you were saying that. Uh... But uh, two years ago, this leaves were of, of such length. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Right. Such so length. So they're slowly over the years as the recycling goes on, yes. uh, reducing back to their reducing, normal size. Yes, reducing to normal. Okay. Time's up, Howard. I think. Right, Bill. I think we have spent long enough here, so let's go back to the uh, road. Very interesting. Yep. 
The problems inside the 30 kilometer zone are difficult enough, but far more lives have been affected by fallout carried much further away to areas where people still live. North of Chernobyl lies Belorussia. 68% of a republic larger than England and Wales is still seriously contaminated with radiation. For the first time, the Institute of Biophysics in Moscow has revealed the data. These villages, for example, are 200 kilometers from Chernobyl. Those worst affected are designated villages of rigid control. A typical example is Novye Gromiki. The radioactive cloud dropped well under one gram of fallout on Novye Gromiki, but it's changed the life of the village forever. It may look normal, but everything is invisibly permeated with radioactive cesium. After the accident, every building was washed down with decontamination fluid. All the roofs were replaced. All open land was treated with chemicals and deep ploughed in an attempt to dilute the radioactivity. Despite these measures, the radiation still reaches the people in two ways. Externally, they receive radiation from their surroundings, especially when they work outside. And if their food is radioactive, it'll be absorbed into the body. People can only live here under a strict set of rules. At the village school, the children's day lasts 12 hours to stop them playing on contaminated land. Children are the most vulnerable group, and so it's important to know how much radiation they're receiving. Twice a year, the radiation scientists come from Kiev to measure how much radioactivity the children have inside them. The probe records the level of emissions from the abdomen. Every child must be monitored. In this village, all the children tested were well within the safety limit. Radiation-free food is the reason for this. These children get three clean meals per day. The Moscow newspapers claim some other villages are not so lucky. The children are permitted outside, but only because the school playing field has been decontaminated. The problem is that high levels of radioactivity are uncomfortably close at hand. Yeah, fine. I was ticking over just to... Right right there, that's just about above background, isn't it? It's just above background, yes. Yeah. So if it's compared with, say, the background back in town, uh, it's certainly slightly up on that, but low, you know, low. Yeah. Let's see what's uh, yeah, on the other side of the fence. Oh, there you go. Away, yeah. Quite a big difference then between just over yeah. the fence, isn't it? It's gone up by about a factor of ten just coming through the fence. This is uncultivated ground here. Um, so. The activity has not been ploughed in, as it probably has been just in the field we've just come from. Is this dangerously high to be spending time here or not? Well, we're getting into the sort of levels now that the Soviets are using for their criteria for evacuation of the village. Uh -huh. uh, as we get nearer the woods, it's going up still more. Though. It's only 200 metres from the school playing field. But levels of radiation are so high, the woods are forbidden to all villagers. Novye Gromiki is now a village hemmed in by radioactive woods. The catastrophe across Belorussia is that every 10 meters the level of cesium changes from insignificant to very dangerous. Inevitably, radioactivity gets into the food cycle. But the biggest problem is with milk. 90% of the radioactive cesium in people has come from the milk. Tatiana Gromiko is trusted not to drink the milk before it's treated. All milk produced in Novye Gromiki is now taken to the state dairy for processing to reduce the radioactivity. Other food eaten by adults is more suspect. Bread, sausage and meat come from outside the village and supplies are supposed to be regular and uncontaminated. But people also depend on homegrown vegetables, fruit and eggs. When the adults come for testing, they have higher levels than the children. 
3,3 микрокюри – это является предельно допустимое содержание цезия. У вас же всего содержание вот, по результатам измерения 0,83. Ну и спасибо. Хорошо. Пожалуйста. А то баба не ходила это ни разу и проверяться. For most of the village, the news is good. Like Tatiana, they test low, despite the ever-present radioactivity. The risks for some are much higher. Pavel Gromyko works in the fields of the state dairy. The woods behind him are heavily radioactive. Yes, These are some of the mushrooms that Pavel Gromyko has picked from the woods. Villagers are all told to have samples of their food checked. The mushrooms are scoring very highly. So what were the results there, Andre? Uh, the results were very interesting. You will see this person also coming through the whole body quarantine yeah. system and we find the highest result in this village. Mm -hmm. And from my point of view, it's the result of the consumption of very highly contaminated uh, Mushrooms, you see, the first sample. The dried mushrooms. Yes, 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 dried mushrooms. And the total activity is more than uh, 800,000 becquerels. It's greatly. I see this mushrooms first time for my long period of work. Yes. It's great, very great. We see we, we must dispose of this mushroom. Pavel Gromyko has the highest score in the village. Most people in Novye Gromyki don't work so long in the open, and most people appear to obey the rules on what to eat. By testing the population across Belorussia, the decimetrists have produced a prediction of the total expected dose for each village over the next 70 years. This is the first public data for the area around Novye Gromyki. The lowest two groups are affected, but won't exceed the Soviet's lifetime safety limit of 350 millisieverts. These are the villages where the prediction is that the population will exceed that safety limit to varying degrees. Novye Gromyki is in the highest group. If the people of Novye Gromyki were to stay here for the rest of their lives, they'd get double the safety limit. The district executive has decided that the village will have to be evacuated in 1991. Well, I think the picture that's come out is the radiation um, the fallout is patchy. This is something which doesn't come out of theoretical models which we have um, for trying to predict what would happen under these kind of circumstances. And this village is an example of an unlucky village, if you like, where there is a particularly heavy patch and they're having to uh, take the ultimate step of moving people away. Ну что ж, чувствуем жалко. Все ж наживали, все строили. Самый. Да жаду жалко, деваться ней. Ну, а куда нас будут выселять? Мы старые уже, дед больны. Куда его выселять? О, не хай садить у свою хату. Хатка и кродная он, матка. А вон рай нам in the Soviet Union there are now 720 villages of rigid control many are hundreds of kilometers from Chernobyl a quarter of a million people may yet have to leave their homes the first sign of the effect of radiation will be an increase in thyroid tumors in children the head of the decimetry team in Kiev is Professor Ilya Liktaryov. 
you expect the increase in thyroid tumors across the Soviet Union to be in the hundreds or the thousands? Значит, при всех обстоятельствах это не тысячи, это сотни. Это не тысячи, это сотни. Но эти сотни раков щитовидной железы, может быть, можно будет увидеть, потому что очень маленький спонтанный уровень. Потому что обычно без облучения их десятки. What are your thoughts and feelings on the effects of the accident from an environmental point of view? Это авария совершенно катастрофические последствия для среды имеет в том смысле, что тысячи гектаров плодороднейших земель с прекрасным климатом выведено фактически из нормального землепользования. Поэтому я считаю, что это просто чудовищное последствие для среды этой аварии. As yet, it's impossible to say precisely how many people in the Soviet Union will die from Chernobyl. The percentage increase in cancers is likely to be very small, but the numbers of deaths could run into tens of thousands. Novye Gromyki is no longer fit for human habitation, and the people who live here must go. In the end, the arguments about Chernobyl all come to rest in these villages. We now know the immediate consequences of a serious nuclear accident. Large areas of land untouchable. Hundreds of thousands of lives in turmoil. Scientists predict there will be deaths in the future, a smaller number than many expected, but enough to confirm the link with radiation. What happens next is a lifetime experiment for the scientists to see whether their predictions will come true. An experiment the people of Belarusia and the Ukraine clearly wish they didn't need to be a part of. <laughs>